Um, can you hear me right now? Yep. Okay. That was weird. Okay, that shouldn't have happened. Oh, yeah. But all right, whatever. We'll we'll redo it. So What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young. We did a virtual boot camp. That's why some of the video content was already loaded. You know who changed some of the intro videos we have, but it is what it is. I'm trying to be more zen these days. Welcome to the <laughs> App Masters YouTube channel where we go live every Friday to give you the latest and greatest of what's working in the app space. And I talk to a guest, special guest, expert of mine. And then we also look at your apps. And today we're going to talk all about market research, how to evaluate game and app ideas from a marketing perspective. And you're going to get a step-by-step -step guide on what trends you should be looking for and what features to build. And obviously what common mistakes to avoid. So without further ado. Hey there, Steve. Uh, hey, everyone. Really glad, glad to be here. It's an honor for me. Man, you're jumping over everything. <laughs> <laughs> man, welcome to the show. I didn't even welcome you. You're just, you're just jumping into everything, man. Oh, gosh. gosh. Sorry about that. I was just so okay. eager to enter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just. All right, Stan. Well, let's kick it off. Like, I really want to talk about this, and I want to give you guys some social proof. Look, we're going to go in step by step. But before we do, Stan, I really want to talk about this because I personally did all the market research. It was a step-by-step -step guide into a market, doing market research. We acquired an app. We then have turned the revenues from $1,000 a month to $12,000 a month by everything is all scientifically based. And I'll tell you exactly how we did it in the future. But I just want to tell – I just want to use that example of us personally doing it to give you how – important it is to do market research so stan all right now take it away my friend yep thank you thank you for the intro steve so yeah uh let us get it going and let us talk for a little bit about how to evaluate your ideas both game ideas and apps ideas for example using the tool app magic that's one of the tools we are working with and i'd say that the first uh, crucial question you might want to ask is what kind of a game or app do i want to build so is there a market is there a niche for it or not and for that, you have to know what is the category or the genre of your app or game. When we are talking about apps, it can be pretty simple. For example, we are talking about VPN, and it's like VPN temped apps, maybe fitness apps or meditation apps. But when we are talking about games, it might get be some a little bit tricky. So for that, uh, you might want to go in the search tab and find your app. Say there is an a game right now called Survivor that is booming, absolutely booming right now. Really? And we want to know, yeah, yeah, actually the guys are making it a new hit, like the new black. And for that, we go to the page of this app and we can see that its genre, not just genre, but subgenre, subcategory is survival arena. So right now mm. we know where to look at. We don't just uh, in general know there is a game, it's quite popular, but that it is a survival arena genre. Actually, that is pretty this, neat because we've got like, that? yep. This is it? This is the, the survivor game you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, okay. what we do we want to, to, to do right now is we want to go back uh, to our top apps chart, and which is especially sweet about it, is that it's a totally free functionality. So any guys out there can go after the stream and check it out and do the same things I'm doing right now. So what do we want to do? We want to look for the last month because, well, day isn't quite, mm -hmm. uh, won't say anything for us. And we want to go for tags. And here we know what we are looking yeah. for already. We are looking for survival arena. So what we are doing right now is we're taking a high level look at the market, asking questions. Is there is one, if it's profitable, and how many competitors are out there? So here, mm. for example, take top, top grossing. Uh, let us go first downwards. And well, there are like 30 games out there in the top grossing category and around 40 in top three. And from the, my perspective, from my experience, it's not much. So the market is growing, but it's not very big right now. Mm. And it's good news. Then let's go to the revenue part for the month. Well, there are some big gains. We can see there are apps out there, there are games out there making 10 grants, making even 
over a million each month. So there are some money in the market as well. It's quite profitable and maybe we want to jump in. But right now we want to have a deeper look. We want to know what's going on. Is it growing? Is it shrinking? Is it hard to enter? Or there is maybe a status quo. So for that, we're going to market segment part. And there, once again, we take our tech survival, survival arena. And uh, let us look uh, this year because uh, this tech, this uh, tech was uh, introduced this year. This genre, whole genre, was introduced this year. Maybe even from from the summer because it when it disappeared. So what we can see right now, this market is growing. From the mm. revenue perspective, we're looking at the revenue right now for the top 20 apps. It's going up and up and it doesn't stop. And that's good news for us as well. So we might want to enter this market because there is no status quo. It isn't shrinking. It is growing and growing big. But mm. then again, is there is a place for new players? Because sometimes you can see the growing market, but the uh, battle there is so harsh, you don't stand a chance. As a new app out there, it's like a killer. So... What should we do next? We should get rid of the like two main apps in this category because when looking at the revenue, we can see that two first places they acquire most of the revenue, like the majority of it, more than ninety percent. And then there are the rest of us. And well, when we will be entering the market, we will definitely be in this tail. So we want to compete with the tail, not with the like big bosses. Actually, uh, there is uh, the first mistake and one the first tip I want to give to to the folks out there. Usually people tend to research only the top games and top apps in the market. And well, at, at first glance, it's quite rational. You want to look at the best, you want to compete with the best. But yeah. researching only in the top can lead to the survivorship bias. Trying to compete with big guys can lead to the situation when you copy their strategy, when you copy their features, and at the end of the day, you can't be as successful as them. So what yeah. you really need especially when entering a new market, is trying to look not only for the big guys, but also for someone who is performing really well, but not perfect. So for mm. us, for that reason, we're getting rid of the first two positions. We want to know what is going on on the market in general. And right here, what, what do we see? Well, first of all, uh, there are not so many apps. Usually when we go to other categories, especially more mature, I might say, like VPN, for example, there you will see like 50 or even 100 top grossing games or apps. And this graphic will be a mesh of colors. Believe me, I've seen it. It's absolutely terrifying. So right now here, the market is pretty, pretty free at the moment. And it's a good sign as well, which is even more important. We can see that there are apps out there. For example, this gray zone, this one. You can see that it appeared just this September, a couple of months ago, and it grows. We can see the lime, I think that's lime color, and the orange color as well, and they're growing as well. So three things we know for sure. The first of all, there is a market, and it's growing, and it's growing pretty fast. Secondly, there are not so many apps out there in the market, which is a good sign. And thirdly, and maybe the most crucial part, there are apps out there that enter the market after the growth began and they are successful. So these three things tell us that there is a chance for us to enter this market. Maybe we should invest resources in this type of game. Of course, there is much more research should be done, but uh, on a higher level perspective, it looks quite promising. Yeah. What can be done next? Uh, so we know that there is a market that maybe we, we can try to compete. Uh, well, the next rational step is try to look at the competitors. What are we trying to look at? Well, once again, let's go to the survivor page. Uh, but this time, uh, survivor. Here it is. But this time we go to the competitors part. And once again, it's absolutely free. So you can enter any type of app, any type of game, and you can look at the competitors, at the main competitors, like direct competitors that you want to look for. There, you can not just see the revenue downloads and just the common metrics, but also the overlap score. That's a special metric we use in the app magic. And what it does, mm. it helps you fast to understand which of the competitors are quite alike. So which one of them you should really focus on in order to be successful. Afterwards, say you, you can have some kind of a benchmark in your mind. For example, uh, I want to have 40 
2% of overlapping or more. And then I've got a list of, say, 10 games that I want to check out, that I want to deconstruct, that I want to go deep in, into, into researching and uh, to know what's going on with them and what can I try to take out of them in order to build a successful app. But once again, we can go even more deeper. And before that, uh, I can share the second um, common mistake and the second yeah. tip for folks out there. It's like a, a more deep technique, uh, analytics kung fu that can be used. Uh, okay. So when you're looking at some kind of a market, we've just seen the market that is growing and this go is getting pretty big. But there are a lot of markets out there, especially mature markets that were there for a couple of years, maybe even for a decade, that are not stagnating, uh, not growing, not shrinking. They're in some kind of a stasis. And we usually call it the trap segment. Why it's so? Usually when you can see that the overall market is pretty much the same from the revenue perspective, it means that folks out there, the publishers out there, they can't buy traffic for their apps or their games with positive ROMI. ROMI, R-O-M-I, is uh, return of marketing investment. So what it basically means is that when they spend a dollar to acquire a person, afterwards, they usually receive the same dollar from the person. They don't have much an, an, of, of opportunity to grow because the same amount of money they invest, uh, they uh, receive in return. And that doesn't really make sense. You want to grow, and for that, you want to get more than you invest. Well, it's usually the investing tactics. So uh, for these type of markets, it usually means that even if you can make a very successful app, even if you will spend your resources for marketing, there is a big chance that you won't succeed. The best thing you can do is just have some kind of an audience, some kind of a traffic, but you won't be profitable enough in order to compete with other guys. By the way, uh, there is another interesting note aside is that usually it means that apps and games of other genres or other categories, but with the same target audience, acquire that audience and buy traffic of this audience better. And that's the main reason why they take this audience from this category and genre and why this genre stays stagnating. And for that, it's really useful to understand not just your direct competitors, but also apps and games out there that has the same target audience. That They might be in the different genre. They might be in the different category. But people out there uh, using their phones usually have the same apps or the same uh, games on the phone and play them and use them both. Find this type of apps, how to go this deep. For that, we've got... Hey, hey Stan, let's, let's yeah. hold up. Let's yeah. pause yeah. real quick. I, I really like yeah. where you're headed with this. I want to say hi to a few people. Miguel, take a break. <laughs> Luke, what's happening? Patrick, Kevin. Uh, let's see. Luke has a question. I have a slightly unrelated question. I'm localizing for Germany, but seems quite a few people ser search in English. How do I combat that? Add English keywords to the back end keyword field? Yeah, Luke, I just use whatever is most popular. So from the search score perspective, whatever is most popular, just use that for in the subtitle or title, right? So just look at those tools and figure out if the English version has more of traffic volume than the German localization, then use the English. All right. And then William says, maybe I should rename the client, rename his, his app Climate Trail to Climate Survival. <laughs> so <laughs> hey, Lux. That's a good one. And Alina's here. What's up, George? Hey, Stan, I want to pause real quick because I, you know, I look at your guys' tool. We talked before and I was like, this is awesome. And, but w one question I had is, how did you know this was survival arena? Like, how did you know that was a subcategory? I had never heard of survival arena before you said it. So, how did you figure that out? That's actually a very good question. So, what we are trying to do. We've got a dedicated team of analytics and they browse through all the new games and apps coming out in the source. So all of them, well, except the most trashiest one that you don't want to analyze. And then you look at the store, you look at the screenshots, you look at the gaming. Sometimes you even download the app or the game and you try it out. And afterwards, 
we make the categorization. So based on that and based on the official categorization system of App Store and Google Apps, uh, we can try to understand whether it is an already existing category or maybe it is some kind of a new category. For example, for for the Survivor, we've, we've been just discussing, uh, there weren't much games of this subgenre before. But after this game appeared, there appeared lots of clones. And in the months upcoming, I'm pretty sure there will be even more. So because of that, mm. we've introduced a new subcategory called Survival Arena. And at first, there was not so many games in, in this subcategory, like uh, maybe five, six. And well, of course, uh, the biggest one of them was Survivor. But right now, we can check it out uh, in this category. Oh. I, I guess there will be lots of games out there, like uh, 50 or 60. So I look at uh, I look at this chart and I'm like, hmm, okay, 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 okay. And then I see survival IO and I pin that, right? Like maybe I see it somewhere. So I go to at magic.rocks. That's the tool. And it's all linked up into the YouTube description. I click on the app and then I'm here and I'm like, oh, casual arcade. Yeah, I get this. But then you're like, oh, survival arena. And I think that's the main reason. I know that's why I wanted us a little bit too. Is the what I like about your tool and we're going to get into an app audit later on about VPNs, but like most of these, some of your competitors will just tell you the top chart and they won't go as deep in terms of tags as you guys do. So that's why I really wanted to spend a little bit of time on this whole subcategory because most other tools would just tell you casual and arcade and then the top categories within those subcategories, but you have these fancy tags that we can get in even a little bit deeper than the normal just games, for example. And then we'll, I think the, the example of our VPNs is going to be really cool too, as we get into it. But that's true. That's true. Thanks for that, Steve. Actually two more comments on that. First of all, we can see that yeah. we don't have just the gameplay categories. We also have settings and we also have visual visualization style. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. very useful that's when cool. you're trying to understand uh, if there is a market, for example, of cloning the game, but in another setting. Maybe you think, yeah. well, okay, I like the survivor, but maybe I should do it in a fantasy genre with some kind of dragons, or maybe in a military genre, or maybe pirates, or you name it. So uh, yeah. basically it helps you to understand what are the market, not just from the gameplay perspective, but also from the setting perspective, from the visualization perspective, and it helps you to analyze this much more narrow and much more specific. Yeah, got it. Yeah, William says, how much is app map? At magic cost URL, it's at magic.rocks. At magic.rocks. I want to make sure we, I like that. But we <laughs> thank can you. Get into thank that you. Yeah. That, here. That's at magic.rocks. If you want, you can check it out. And uh, the free version is, uh, well, actually pretty big from my point of view. You've, there is a lot of functionality out there that you can yeah. play with. Yeah, that's true. I'm on the free uh, version. So, yeah, I'm still on exactly. the, oh no, you guys gave me premium access. You oh. did give me premium. So thank you. But yeah, I am most, you can get a lot of done on the free version as well. Yeah, yeah. William. We've got some clients out there. Uh, they've told us, you know what? We we don't even know why we should buy your app because uh, most of the functionality we use is free. And we, we yeah. were like, well, damn, it seems like we're, we're doing our job too good. That, that's not, not, yeah. not going well for us. <laughs> that's funny. And then Justin asked, Justin, it's not just for games, for apps. Is this only for game apps? No, it's for apps too. But we're just sticking on with games as uh, an example. And we're going to, if you stick around long enough, Justin, we're going to get to VPNs. You know, I picked out these, these apps that are, that want us to audit it because I wanted to really talk about games that are doing well already or decently. And then a VPN feature. So stick around for that and we'll get into the app side of things. All right. Where, where did you leave off here? I'll go back to your screen. Here you go. Yeah, yeah thank you. Actually, uh, yeah. uh, we are pretty much uh, close to the end. So after some time, we definitely will go to the VPNs. So guys, uh, don't, yeah, uh, don't be worried. So once again, we were on, uh, on the step where we were talking about the competitors and not so direct competitors, but with the same target audience, you would like to check. So what we're trying to do is we go to the similarity graph and there we can take our uh, survivor game. Yeah, here it is. And uh, actually, it works like as we call it, like magic. So what it does, using the algorithms of App Store and Google Play, and enhancing them, going deep through these algorithms, we can see what type of apps and what type of games are used by the, the same target audience. So for the survivor. Mm -hmm. These are the games and these are the apps 
some of them you wo you won't see in the competitors page because they are not like uh, direct competitors, face to face competitors. But usually they still are on the same phones and steal your time and your money. So what maybe you should think about is that for the most interesting similar apps based on the target audience, similar apps out there, you might want to mm. check them out as well and use some of their features, use maybe some of their monetization, use some of their tips and tricks in order to work with your targets as well. Because if it works in their apps with the same target audience, then in lots of cases, it might uh, mean that it will work in your app or your game as well. So it's a pretty useful instrument when you have, you, you need some kind of an insight in order to go deeper and grasp something that is not on the surface, not like uh, checking the features of the direct competitors, but going deeper and then making something more unique. And at the end of the day, being more profitable. Yep, I love it. Okay. I also so, want to share this. Uh, yep, yep. Go ahead, Stan. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm going to stay on this a little bit. Uh, keep your screen open on that. So Adrian, you're finally late, but because you're the last comment I saw, I pulled up your app real quick in the similarity tool. So you go select tool and similarity graph. And then what I want to say as well, Stan, is from a marketing perspective, you know, you're, you've been talking about features, what to develop from a marketing perspective. Let's say your app is out there. I like this tool because from what we found with our Apple search ads campaigns is targeting the brand names of our competitors actually converts really well. And so if you look at the similarity chart for you, Adrian, you can see like Reiki, Sage, like these might be keywords that you start bidding on within Apple search ads, because for one of our bigger clients, you know, we're spent, we're getting a lot better cost per installs going after our competitors versus saying like go after meditation, which is going to be hugely expensive anyways. So it's a, a more low cost, high converting marketing strategy by using the similarity graph. And you can get to get a sense of like, all right, which keywords would be and which brand would be the best converting for me as well. And the same with goes for games too. Like how exactly. would you use this from a marketing perspective? Is it trying to be as like aggressive in, and I don't even know if this is possible because I'm not an expert in this, but like, for example, if I'm doing the survivor app, Archero, like how do I advertise my app in, in Archero? Like, is it that type of way? Like I want to start advertising my app in this other app because I know well, actually, you have a lot of overlap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's one type of, and one way of using it. You can look at the apps that are used by your target audience and then you can buy ads in these exact apps and you, well, there is a high possibility that you would succeed, that this target audience will click on your app and say, hey, wait, I really love it. So this is a, a big thing for trying to make your marketing campaign. If you if you want to go even deeper, uh, there is an instrument as well. Uh, I'm not sure we want to cover it right now, but there is one called Ad Intelligence. And with it, you can go even deeper and you can see inside the app what kind of other apps are advertising right now and what are the click-through rates. So basically, you can mm. understand using the similarity graph and after that, the Ad Intel. Uh, what type of uh, apps or games you want to be advertised in and what type of ads are, are in this app or in this game right now and you will be having a hard battle with. So in general, mm -hmm. it will really help your marketing campaigns and focusing your funds in the channel that will be the most profitable. Yeah, I like it. Well, I'm doing it right now. I'm Stan, I've been obsessed with Sudoku, okay? I think I finally hit an age <laughs> where I can call me old, all right? <laughs> you can call me old, all right? I mean, I am obsessed with Sudoku. So I've been using this app, sudoku.com. I'm actually trying to find somebody at Easy Brain to come on and share their stuff with me. But here, I'm in the Sudoku app. And so I am I can see where they're advertising, right? Because you gave me premium access. Yep. I can see where they're advertising. And then how do I get to which apps are advertising within Sudoku? This actually, app. you can click... Uh, you can click on any any type of app. So in the ad intelligence, uh, you've got like four graphs by ads of app, by publisher says, by market segment, by store category, and overall. Uh -huh. And you can try to, oh. to click, uh, for example, um, I might say the, the first one, it's any type of that you love. But let's call it vintage, not old. I think the Sudoku type, it's more of a vintage thing. Right. So what do you want me to put? Sudoku or no? Uh, yep. Yeah, Sudoku is all right. Oh. 
So this is by publisher. Okay. So this is a publisher I can see. But you said I can see what ads are showing within a particular app, right? How do I do that? That's right. Uh, just a sec. Let me check it out on my screen as well, just in order to find it, because it can be pretty, pretty deep. Um, survivor, just a sec. Mm. Okay. Um. By the way, Angelina loves the mind mapping, the similarity stuff. On the train yesterday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah, so um, you can go to the app page using this. Uh, pretty, pre actually, it works for majority of the apps. No, though for some oh. of them, there isn't much of an advertising stream there. So main reason for that is that some of the apps use their advertis advertising in them, and some of them don't, apparently. Mm -hmm. So for some of the apps, you won't see this. And for some out there, you can check it out. So you, you you really want to know what what type of ad are you going for? Got it. Uh, you, you you can go uh, you can go to the for example Sudoku game or TikTok. Yeah, if you can see my uh, screen right now. So uh -huh. where we we went is overall category, and there you can go for for example show more. And for that, uh, for example, we know TikTok. Yep. Well, who doesn't? and applications with this creative so we can see what type of creative is used in what type of application so once again now if we want we can go by ads of app and we can take the survivor for example yep and this this is uh we know that this is the creative for the survivor game and even more we know the exact creative we're looking at and now we can see the games where this creative Getting impressions oh, right now. Um, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, nice. it's, it's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you can just, for example, if you want to compare the, like the best performing creatives out there, and like right now they're sorted by impressions. And we can see that this mm -hmm. is like the best performing creative of this game. And we want to know where mm -hmm. these guys are buying their traffic. What are the most uh, like targeting audience for them? What are the most targeting games or apps? We go there, mm -hmm. we press show more, and boom, right here, we know what type of apps what type of games using their creatives. And from that, if we are building the same game, maybe these are the apps and games we should look upon in the terms of marketing. I like it a lot. Yep. Yeah. Here I'll for those who are not games, I got the I got calm set up right here. Yep. Yep. Uh you can this is the highest one, right? You can have, even hit play. You can hit download and then you hit show or more. And then it looks like the impressions are all on Facebook right now. And you can even see it by country. So Yeah, yeah, which which is pretty actually which is pretty rational because super simple. Like anybody can create that ad. Really cool. But there well, you go. But works works uh -huh. like chump. Yep. Yeah. And if they're high conversions, you can bet that they're probably it's uh it's working well for them, right? They're doing a lot of tests. So yeah, yeah. Usually, it means that if you if you see the big impressions, usually it means that the company or publisher out there spends a lot of resources in this channel or for this app. So it means so for this creative, they really believe in it. Maybe they've gotten good performance of that, and based on that, you probably should look at it as well. Yeah, yeah. And Stan, I think uh, you like this next thing. Thing, Yep, yep. Okay. Sorry. You, you want to go to the last thing? Or do you how? Here, I think you're gonna like yeah, this. Yeah, sure. William, I've known William for a few years now. This is the best app marketing tool I've ever seen. And I've been to mobile apps all the way back to the feature phone area. Yes, I told you, William's been around for a long time. So he really likes your tool. Hey, William, wow. let me tell you, all right? I did my homework too. I talked with Stan, I spent some time and I was like, wow, that's really cool. All right, I didn't just, you didn't just, you know, we didn't just say, hey, come on without me looking at it. So yes, you're welcome, all right? Stan, I'm taking all the credit, all right? You don't get any credit. I get all the credit for this, all right? <laughs> That's all right. That's right. You totally deserve it. You're the man. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the last thing is the situation yeah. when we are talking not about the exact app or exact game. Uh, there are some situations when you're you're saying, yeah, we are like we've got uh, 100 or 1 million or you name it, uh, some amount of money that we want to spend on developing a new app, but we're really not sure what we should look upon. So for that, for this situation, yeah. you can use another useful tool and it's free overcharge as well it's called top trending 
So basically what it does, for example, we want top trending for the last month because we like want cream to la cream, the freshest, the best of them. And for example, once again, we can go to, we can go to tech and we can use the survival arena. Yeah, here it is. Mm -hmm. Hi. And so though a lot of games, We are looking for it's here brilliant. a lot of data going on there and there is a pretty neat but difficult to work with algorithm what it basically does it compares a lot of parameters in order to understand what are the uh best winners on the market right now not the best performing winners but someone who is growing best of the best their speed their velocity is the best and we can see that mm. for survival arena subgenre worldwide for the last month there were only three games out there and we remember that when we were looking at the market actually there were like 20 of them into the in, in in the top crossing so yeah. the market itself looked pretty promising but there are not so many new apps that appeared uh not so long ago for example like in the last month uh, and that made it not to the tops, but at least that look that look promising. And from what I'm seeing right now, I'd say that the last one, that's some kind of a game for the Asian region, uh, region I guess, from, from the name. So it came all from the place 65,000 in the top grossing category to mm -hmm. 2,500. So in one month, it's a huge jump. And mm -hmm. there are maybe several reasons for that, but usually... A jump this big means that these guys know what they're doing. And you definitely, if you're developing some kind of an app or some kind of a, I don't know, a game, you definitely want to look into it as well. And by the way, uh, in the second part, we wanted to talk about apps as well, VPNs. And right now we might want to look at VPNs that did good last month in the same tool, for example. Why not? Say... Yeah, here we come. So overall, there are more than 1,000 VPNs out there in their market. But last month, there were only seven that performed so well, they appeared in our top gross and gainers. And once again, mm -hmm. these are not the top performing. Because, well, usually we know these, they are like the giants. They're the biggest ones. And these are the apps that are growing very, very fast, much faster than majority of them. And usually it means that they're doing something uh, specifically. They're doing something other way. Maybe they are buying traffic more effectively. Maybe they're monetizing better. But either way, both of them Let's are say, good. Click on, one of them. click on the first one. Let's click on it. This one. What happened? Yeah. 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 Sure. Law one booster, no lock. Because can't you? Never. We can do some analysis, right? We can do the ad intelligence, see what they're doing. Yeah, we can kind of dissect. Yeah, yeah. from a marketing perspective. Exactly, we can dissect it. Yeah, exactly. We oh, can yeah. dissect it even, even deeper. So we can see the RPD revenue per download global and in tier one by east. Actually, that's pretty neat because usually when you are talking about different tools or VPNs, some of them might be popular yeah. in the west region, some of them in the east region. And here we can see that uh, definitely this tool is focused on the Asian region, China specific. And most of the RPD is focused on tier one East. Tier one is like the biggest and most profitable countries out there in the East or West region. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And I, I know you didn't do this, but I'll, I'll do this real quick. What you can do is I'm under the meditation. You need to do like new, right? And I like that. Like I, I did it without any category, but when it's probably better without any category, then you can really take a look at the new apps and then you can see what's trending from a new perspective. It looks like phone optimizer. Gas is going crazy right now. So <laughs> that's true. That's true. Actually, that's a very good um, thing. You can try to look for the new apps that are doing good right now, not in the tops, but they're growing really quick. And that's a mm -hmm. great way for you to analyze the market when you're looking for a new niche, a new genre, you don't want to miss successful things that will will be the new hit of the town like in upcoming months. Yeah. And you know, what I really liked about your tool was this revenue per download number because I think it's so 
you know, I was going to do some content around this where it's like, look, if I were launching a brand new, let's say mindfulness app or meditation app, here's mm -hmm. the, you know, like on average, you should be getting $2 per download. And so now you have enough market data to be like, all right, let me set up my Apple search ads campaign to get $2 if I'm just trying to break even in the very beginning or 150. And so it gives you that number to kind of aim for and then go after it. And then you can see that, you know, they're big in France. And that's what, so it's like other markets that you might not be considering might be interesting. Now they're probably based in France and that's why they're doing well. But like at the same time, like it gives you enough data to start going and moving forward with it. Like where should you be? Because if that revenue number is lower and you can do some market research around this, then you got a conversion problem, right? It's not a top of the funnel problem. It's the middle of the funnel problem. And we've yep. seen pretty good results. So yep, yep, your... exactly. So it's, it's the question of unit economy. Using this tool, you can try to build it like on a high level and understand will it work or not? And if not, what, what is the part of the funnel that you really have to work with in order to gain success? I love it. All right, Stan. Let's yep. get into the next part of our interview. And if you guys want us, it's the app audit part. If you guys want us to take a look at your apps, just go to appmasters.com slash audit, appmasters.com slash audit. I want to make sure I have a long list that I can take me well into 2023. So it's one of my favorite things to do. And we're going to do that right now. But Stan, before we do, you better do your homework right now. We would like to start off every app audit segment with a little bit of dad joke. <music> All right, Stan, I know you don't have anything yet, so maybe you'll come up with something, but I got a joke for you. Ready? All right, all right. Yeah, shoot it out. I accidentally I accidentally took my cat's meds, medicines, last night. Don't ask me yow. <laughs> <laughs> right. You got one? Uh, let, me, let me think about it. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hmm. Not yet, not yet. You do have another one. Maybe you can pull it out and shoot it. Dad jokes. It's a puzzle. We have two of them in word topics. Oh, really? That's funny. All right, Ricardo might have one, and we'll battle Ricardo. All right, we got Krishnil. I think I said his name right. Krishnil's app. He says it's his VPN app. He says he wants help with increasing user base and generate more revenue. I want the app to make over $50,000 a month and need your guidance on how to make it happen. Well, this is what I say whenever I hear high numbers. Krishna, according to App Magic, you don't make any money yet. So before you even try to make fifty thousand, let's try to get to one thousand first. All right, like let's <laughs> let's aim lower and let's try to get that. And I'm trying to come up with some content, stand around like how do you get to your first one thousand? Because I think that is a critical mark where you start feeling like really good about your app, like it's that four figures, and then you can scale it up from there. But yes, so. That is one. True. Lower your goals, true. get to 1,000 first, <laughs> and then start moving on. But anything you want to talk about from the App Store presence perspective? Actually, uh, for the VPN app, it's a very good like aim, but I totally agree with you here. So 1,000 seems to be like a better idea. And uh, yeah. 1,000 is a good thing in order to scale up. So when you th see the 1,000 in revenue, then you can buy the marketing more effectively you know what to do and you can scale up to 50. so what i will uh maybe introduce what i will um advise i think yeah. uh first uh you can try to go to another tool of ours called advanced search i can do it or maybe you you can do it if you want hey, why don't you go yeah yeah you know where to, exactly where to go i'll just be like uh, where do i go next yeah, okay, perfect. So here, uh, we know that we are dealing with VPN. So we want uh, our first step, we want to check who succeeded. So we want to check who, for example, was released during the last half a year and who's already making 1,000 or more. Mm -hmm. Because for, for us, that will be like the benchmark. That are the guys that we want to check out and understand how they're working. Maybe some of the features should be copied for our app as well. For that, how do we want to make it? So... Uh, we can either use the VPN in the keyword search, but frankly speaking, not all the VPNs out there use the VPN in the keyword search. Though th this should be the like the, the best way possible, but still surprisingly, there are pretty successful VPNs out there without the VPN in their naming. Maybe because they're named not in like English language, different reasons. So yeah. we take the VPN tag, 
here we go. And we want to see the release period. We, right now, we want to see who was released in the last half year, say from May up yeah, to November. That. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we can have the metrics range. We can either have the revenue range or downloads range. Mm. And for, for mm. us, we, we have some kind of a revenue uh, revenue goal. So we want yeah. to make it 1,000 monthly. So in half a year, we want to know which apps that were released during this period have made at least 6,000 and maybe up to, I don't say, maybe 20,000. Okay. Let, let's be realistic here as well. So yeah, l let us look at that. Not so many apps. And that's good. That's good news. Why? Because we can dig deeper into them. There are seven apps out there. We can, actually, we can, yeah, yeah, we can filter them by the revenue. And we can see that there are just seven apps during that were released during the last half year and made more than $1,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So we should really dig deep into them and understand what were they doing, how were they doing it, and what kind of keywords were they using, what kind of marketing strategies were they using, what kind of creatives were they using. So basically, we want to make the analysis and make it deep. And, well, and I'm always saying, when you're trying to build an app, and we, when you're trying to be successful, your bread and butter is data. You want to be data-driven on each step. You want to be data-driven when uh, working with the features. You want to be data-driven when working with conversions and marketing. Because at the end of the day, step-by-step data-driven approach will help you. Okay. So, Hey, Stan, click on, click on stable, yep, yep. the first one. Uh, yep, sure. Stable Just VPN, yeah. On that out. I to okay, if you can scroll down to the... Okay, can you can scroll down real quick to yep, the screenshots. Yep, yep. There you go, perfect. So look, mm -hmm. uh, no, no, keep it on the screen. Okay, there, there you go, perfect. The uh, Look, if you compare those with this, you can see that Krishnal... Your screenshots are not as pretty as uh, stable, right? Like your first screenshot is just like, what is this? There's no benefit to this. And then safe and internet. Look, most people want, look, you, look at the branding here. Stable, fast, unlimited. That's it, right? Like global network. But you are using secure, safe internet access in one tap, fast and secure. But the other thing is multiple locations. This multiple locations, I don't like the... Uh, the color scheme here. I think it makes it super hard to read, but this should be one of the first screenshots. Unlimited should be one of the first three screenshots. So you have a lot of, like I said, bring down your goals. 50,000 is a great goal, but make your first 1,000, unless you've already done it. Like, you know, like uh, let's look into your account. <laughs> but unless you've already done it, it doesn't look like you have. Like just try to get to that first 1,000 and then go on forward. So let's let's get into the app itself. Stan, I want to. All right. So yep. Ricardo yeah, sure. has a let's see whose joke is better. Uh, I'll answer this question a little bit. William doing lunges for exercises is a big step. I think that is the joke. <laughs> <laughs> when seagulls fly over the bay, are they? What? I don't know. I don't know what that means, but OK. Ricardo always has a joke for me. What do you call a factory that makes OK products? A satisfactory. <laughs> That's nice. That's a good one. All right. All right. Let's get into Krishnal's app and let's take a look if there's anything he can do. From a Actually, while you're opening it, there is one the joke of my own as well. I've just uh, came up with okay. it. Uh, so, uh, Im imaginary son. And I caught my son chewing on electrical cords. So I had to ground him. He's doing better currently and now conducting himself properly. I like it. All right. But... That's why if you thought my joke was better and then put m if you thought stan's joke was better we're both steves <laughs> or we both start with s so you can't do that but why yeah, for yeah. steve young and put m for stan m all right cool good one he says william says big step forward when our seagull when seagulls fly over the bay they are are they tired <laughs> okay <laughs> all right let's get into that one's enough selling us safe and secured Okay. Again, I want to re remind people that it's a VPN app. I get it. They probably remember, but it's always good to remind people that this is a VPN app again. Fast servers, three-day trial, monthly afterwards, continue. 
Actually, uh, you know what? There is one observation as well. So when usually we're talking about the first session and we are talking about the onboarding, so the first three screenshots mm -hmm. is crucial to hook up your customer. So from what we've seen, uh, we were talking about the features. Uh, Three-day trial, well, it's nice. Uh, multiple locations, nice as well. But usually what you're trying yeah. to aim at is understand your users' pain points and work with them. Yeah. So uh, yeah. multiple locations, well, uh, I don't really maybe know what to do with them. But for example, it works like charm every time. That's what I like. I just want my VPN to work. I want to press one button and not think about anything. So what I want to do and what I want to see, not just a list of features, it's useful when you're a developer. But as a user, I not always can understand what is going on. But as a user, mm -hmm. I know my pain points. I know what I'm looking for when I'm downloading the app. So maybe you can enhance this, uh, this feeling. Maybe you can help me because you can highlight these pain points and say, okay, so this is the solution, this is the solution, and this is the solution. And I'm like, Oh, wow, that, that, that's actually what I was looking for. When I was downloading the app, even though I maybe even didn't analyze it and understand it, now I know it. And maybe now there is a bigger chance I will go deeper, I will return to this app, and I will be there. You know, I, I like the, what I like about this is I like the claim 40% discount. I think I would just still say 40% off up here. It, the messaging was a little bit weird. I can't remember what the th previous one said, but I would default to this. And I think you were defaulting to here. Upgrade a premium is probably the worst converting call to action. It's either unlock all features, start free trial, but I don't mind the claim 40%. I just think that you would want to put 40% up here to make this plan a little bit more interesting. That's happens. true. And actually, uh, talking about best practices, usually for the paywalls, and we're looking at the paywall right now, they say that you, you really want to use either social proof, like 98% of our clients mm -hmm. use this type of uh, subscription, or they really love our tool, or they get five out of five reward. Or maybe you want to use some kind of a um, personalized paywall. It's a much more difficult thing, especially when you're working with the person, you don't really know what to show in the personalized paywall because you don't know anything about the person. But using the onboarding right, having some kind of a questionnaire there may help you to personalize your own uh, paywall, the first one. And then maybe maybe increase the chance of buying the, your product and your subscription. Yeah. And then I don't mind that you're showing this. I think it's effective to show the paywall on every app open. We'll have some stats. I know Jake from Superwall is putting some stats together on this. And I do know just having talked to many clients that showing the paywall on every open helps increase conversions. But what I think you can also do, Kirill, I don't know if I said this right. Uh, let's see. What's his name? Krishnil. The When I hit X here, because you know, if I sign up to premium, I get no ads. If I hit X here, feel free to show me an ad. Right, like not everybody's gonna buy a subscription, so hit me with an ad because you make it clear that I'm gonna get an ad. It says no ads, and I decided not to say no to your subscription, so I'm fine if you hit me with an ad. Yeah, yeah. Basically, what you're doing is when you say, "Yeah, you know what? I don't want to buy the subscription," then right away you might like feel the consequences consequences. Oh gosh, for, of your choice. So you might want to see the app and vice versa, there is a chance that the user won't return to your app afterwards. So you yeah. want to show him the app right away in order to monetize him at least in the first session. Yep. And I knew you were going to do this, Krishnil. I hate it. That's why I was telling you. I knew you were going to show me an ad after I hit connect. That's fine, but I would rather you show it before I hit connect. In my personal humble opinion, I've just seen it from other apps and other clients who do the same thing where they I hit the X because this ruins the user experience whereas the other one's like, I get it. I just said no to you about removing ads. Fine, right? Where this is like, I'm trying to connect and now you're showing me an ad. It's like, oh, anyways, that's how I feel. But test it. I don't know if it's right or not. This is my gut call. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, I get it. William says, when seagulls fly over the bay, are they bagels? That's better. Okay. What's up, Taha? Good to see you. And Joa says, I think the jokes are funny. Okay, cool. Let's get into the next app. Do you have another joke, Stan? Oh, uh, not yet. Not yet. My, I might have yeah. a look into the depth of my memory. All right, cool. Uh, 
Okay, here you go. <laughs> All right, I like this one. All right. Stan, do not throw yeah. sodium chloride at people. Okay, do not throw so sodium chloride at people. That's assault. Salt. That's assault. <laughs> Get it? Salt. Sodium chloride. Yeah, that's a chemistry yeah, that's joke. Yeah, like from a America. chemistry joke. Exactly. Yeah. All right. You got one or no? No, uh, no, no. I think I'll skip this one. Okay, cool. Let's get into the next app. We have Dominique's app, and we got a game. So I was trying to combine both games and VPN to really highlight that tag feature that I love. Just want to say it one more time. Like with App Magic, you can go into those tags, right? Now, fools, you guys don't have all the tags. I was just looking for like sleep sounds, and it was like That's meditation true. sleep. So not all the tags are there, but like for other, t it's better than what the other tools would give you, which is, you know, you're just going to have to look under the productivity section whatever this app is i'm just going to assume utilities are put utilities are productive yeah so it was yep, under yep. utilities but here at least with app magic you get to go under the v app and they're just coming out with new and more tags all the time so i really like that was i felt like was a big differentiator from what i've seen with other tools as well all right let's get into this app yep, all thank right. you. What, you know, keywords optimization so, okay Go for it. Yeah, dwarfs, world adventure, dwarfs. All right. So uh, what I have to say, and this is really important when we're talking about keywords optimization, they work a little bit different. Well, a little bit is not the, the right word. A lot differently when we're talking about games and apps. What's the reason for that? When we're talking about apps, keywords are usually used for, well, as we've already discussed, for the pain points, for the problems. So you bring the solution. And usually when people try to search for something, they're looking for either the name of their problem or the name of their solution. So that's like the rational way of using the keywords because using them, there is a better chance you will be up in the scoring system and then you will get your downloads. But when we're talking about games, it's getting pretty difficult because usually people search for games, yeah. not just, for example, I, I broke my finger. Well, what kind of game can help me with it? Oh, I want to sleep better. There is a meditation tool. There are sleeping sounds. But there is no, there are no games out there that I can try to find using the keywords. So for the games, keywords and using the keywords are, I might say, not so important as for the apps. Yeah. Vice versa, for the games, marketing is the king. So usually when you want to compete and when you want to be successful on the market, what you want to do is using the data, analyze what works best for you, what type of creatives, what type of keywords, what type of, uh, no, what type of uh, screenshots, as we've just discussed. And based on that, you can try to understand uh, what should you change and how should you scale. Uh, once again, oh, 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 yeah, there is a YouTube trailer, trailer number four. All right, all right. So, uh, there are like tips and tricks that uh, can be still used for the keywords optimization of the games as well. So, what do you want to do with your keywords? First, you want them to be relevant. There is nothing worse than having a very popular keywords in order to get the target audience. And when your target audience comes, they suddenly see that the, your game is in the other genre or doing the other thing. It means that this audience will go away, maybe put you a bad rating. So in the end of the day, it isn't worth it, guys. Because we've seen games out there trying to do this, trying to mimic, trying to, we call it them werewolves. There are even games out there trying to, you know, uh, to use the screenshots and to use the first user session, the first um 10 minutes of gameplay trying to look like another game more popular genre mm -hmm. on the market and then they reveal themselves and they are like you know what uh on the surface i'm just uh the game of other genre and the main reason for that is because uh for the game of the popular genres Sometimes uh, they're really hard to, de to develop. You need a lot of resources, you need a lot of people, uh, but they uh, attract people. So some folks out there, some publishers, they try to mimic. And that's not the best strategy. So first of all, try to use relevant words for your game, relevant keywords. So here, for example, we can see that the main character is a dwarf, apparently. And there are even two 
uh, two word dwarf in the in the title. Actually, I'm yeah. not sure that's the good idea because uh, I don't remember for the Google Play for the but for the App Store, they definitely uh, can. Uh, understand when you're using the single and plural and when you're using the single in the keyword then they automatically will merge the plural as well so there isn't much of uh, sense of like doubling it and well i i'm guessing but i think in google play it works the same so that, that that's like the the first advice use the relevant words secondly you want to use the keywords they've got high popularity and that's a pretty basic advice. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in real quick. Yep, Sorry, yep. I apologize. Yep, yep. But sure, sure. I appreciate appreciate some of the things. We I want to be good on time. I want to make sure we always hit an hour. Yep. So I'm gonna go quick. <laughs> sure, you're going a sure. little. You're going at like 40 miles per hour, and I'm like, let's go to 70 right now. So the what Stan said to a second point, the the keyword volume is not Dominique. The keyword volume you for a game, Stan said you're going to have to focus on different marketing, external marketing channels. And that's the way to do it. People are not searching for games in my opinion, app store search. Like Stan said, they're, they have a problem. They're not looking for your game. You calling it dwarf, it, according to app follow that keyword has no search volume whatsoever. And so there's no point whether you're trying to rank for dwarf or not, even if you're number one for dwarf, you're not going to get that many downloads. So really do a lot, a lot of keyword research, a part of my strategy that I'm about to release, I just want more data, is do an extensive keyword research to figure out what keywords and then based off of that keyword, build the app, right? And so you pick the wrong keyword. Now, the reason why I was going to the YouTube description was, hey, if you're on a budget, which I'm going to assume you are given the downloads you have, you can optimize your YouTube. Now, I know a little bit about YouTube optimization. And so what you want to do is if there are similar apps out there, right? You can use app magic, but things that you've built and you're like, Oh, you know, it's very similar to these type of games. You want to have these games, their brands as keyword tags within your YouTube, right? We're don't, we're doing a lot of studies on this right now. It's low touch, low maintenance. I forget what the, the, the word I'm trying to use is it's simple to do low hanging fruit, but high impact, low fruit, right? Yeah. It won't hurt you. Yeah. So like low, yeah, low effort, high impact. So what you want to do is rather than dwarf is fine here, but you want to have different keywords, just like on iOS, you have keywords fields of similar types of apps. It's mega run, temple run. I don't know what you're trying to copy here or Mario run. I would have these terms in this video tags right here. And we've seen the Google play explore downloads increase because of it. Stan, was there anything on tip three? Did you have a tip three that you wanted to share? Tip three? Uh, yeah, I might say you want to uh, to use high popular words and low competitive words. So you don't want to be competitive with someone else. And I think that the main t tip three will be, whoa, you want to be in your league. So even if you're using uh, high popularity and low competitive keywords, you still might be beaten up with the guys that have like, thousands tens of thousands of downloads out there right. and then they will probably be more successful than you in the keywords optimization though you might be using the same keywords so be sure that using the same keywords you're competing with the guys of the same size of the same downloads the same revenue the same characteristics mm. and metrics as you do because then you got a chance mm. that's a that's a good point that's a good point uh, i like it yeah, if you can see dwarfs, just not a volume and you're just not going to beat some of these guys. I like it. I think the best example for that is like when I think about meditation apps, you know, there's so many off of this. It's like, you know, these are the big guys. Don't go after these guys. Like think about other apps yeah. around keywords around meditation that you have to, you can compete with. And so, you know, like I say, breathing exercises, deep breathing, pace breathing. These are all best keywords that are similar to meditation. You can always go up. Right, Stan? But I'd rather start from yep. the very bottom where nobody's paying attention and then go up. So, yeah, like do extensive yep. keyword yep. research. Exactly. All right, cool. The tool that we've been highlighting all stream long that William has said this is one of the best marketing tools out there. I believe it. I really love it. Now, I 
And that's why I wanted to bring Stan on and really highlight this for you guys. So it is at magic.rocks, at magic.rocks. It is linked up into the YouTube description as well. Stan, if the audience wants to connect with you in any other way, do you want to send them anywhere else? Uh, if they want, they can use either my email. It's uh, sm um, at at magic.rocks so the same name of the website and sm in the beginning or they can try to find me on uh, facebook stan minasov just as in the description i'm well i don't hide anywhere so it's pretty easy because google yeah huh? <laughs> well stan's linkedin profile <laughs> yeah, is yeah. linked up to the youtube description as well so you can reach out to him right there Taha, what's happening brother good to see you i think that's it you have any uh oh bond says mom how do i look dad with your eyes Oops, wrong way. Classic. I like it. A lot of people have jokes. <laughs> I love it. That's good. All right, guys. Great show. Adrian, great show. We'll be checking this out ASAP. Yeah, definitely check it out. Next week, we're going to talk all about the state of subscription apps. And so there's some interesting data that has come out. Stan, subscription apps are now like taking over some of the games in terms of posting oh. right now. It's starting to peak. But yeah, it's crazy. Probably the big guys like Netflix and you know Disney, all the streaming wars. But we're going to talk about the state of the subscription apps and then also the five key metrics that you have to pay attention to with that. So join us every Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific. I ain't going anywhere. And go check out our website at masters.com. Until next week, I'll see you. Have a great weekend.